they were young dudes, you know, living the dirtbag life, sleeping at the skate park that didn't have a shower, you know, and stuff like that. And that was all happening an hour north of where we were. And we were just like little kids and hanging out in our local bike shop that had like GTs and dinos and Haros and... Well, hey, man, uh, thanks for coming on uh, on a Sunday. I appreciate it. I know, you know, Sundays are usually with family, but you squeezed me in. So you just recently was the MC at uh, Nitro Circus. How how do you how how that happen? So um, Nitro Circus does a few like, I guess you could say smaller than their like big stadium shows and stuff like that, where um, they tour around and go to like Walmart parking lots and set up like a big airbag rig and the, the Roland's probably three stories tall and I don't know, it's pretty wild setup, you know, yeah. but so some of the guys that ride in the shows, I know just, uh, from riding BMX growing up and then, uh, Micah Kranz, who's like one of their main MCs. Um, it's, uh, he's had like a box jump show called division BMX, like a stunt show that man. It's probably had to uh, over 10 years now. We're all old BMXers, so I have to, like, think in, in terms of, like, it might even be coming up on, like, 15 years now, maybe more than that. But so they were just rolling through town. Uh, they didn't have an announcer, and so my buddy hit me up to just come hang out anyways, and then kind of one thing led to another. And I used to have BMX contests back in the day where I'd announce, and so he he's ridden in them and knew my qualifications, I guess you could say. And <laughs> so, yeah, reeled me in. So, oh yeah, I was gonna say, you mentioned, I was gonna say, is that your first time? But obviously you've done it before, so you felt pretty comfortable. Oh yeah, I was actually, it's been a while since uh, I've been on a microphone. I, man, there was one of the, the, the zombie goat, they did a long jump and the guys woke me from sleep in the trailer and they were like, we need an announcer. And I'm like, all right, we can do this. And <laughs> it was getting pretty fun. And then some kid ended up uh, like twisting his ankle real bad and it kind of like killed the vibe. And that was kind of the end of the long jump. but. So I had like a, a good little like 30 minutes of uh, kind of getting back into it. Maybe, I don't know, last fall, winter time. But yeah, this was uh, the first time back in a while. It was it was pretty awesome. I was pretty stoked. How did uh, people, they, I'm sure you did all right. Did you get any, any responses from anybody? Yeah, it was not too bad. I, I uh, my buddy who I, you know, like I said, grew up with, who was riding in the show, he's like, yeah, you did awesome. You did awesome. And I'm like, yeah, but. I'm the same way. I, I, I want to do like better than i i knew what i could do and and uh i just felt like i was a little rusty i guess you could say you know but being able to do two back to back like a saturday and sunday the yeah. sunday show is a lot better than the saturday show i yeah, think yeah it all it's all like it's like this uh you know if you were to go back and listen to my first ones you'd be like man this is hard to listen to <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah you get into your groove and it's yeah yeah you just get a little rusty too if you don't do it after you've been doing it for a while yeah and sometimes i still kind of go back and forth of do i want to carry note like make notes but i also want it to be organic so it's i, I go back and forth on that a lot for sure but, uh so, some people i mean i'm getting a little bit of praise like hey you're doing all right so no, i like the whole just the conversation aspect of yeah. it more than like all right this is the agenda and the more of like a, a styled interview, I guess, you know? Yeah. So, uh, we were just talking before we started, you're from Iowa, but you live in Texas. How long were you in Texas before you moved here? Uh, so we actually, we left Iowa and, uh, moved to upstate New York for a couple of years. So we live in Rochester, New York. And right. I worked, uh, at the company, uh, kink BMX and blackout distribution is like their distribution center, sold to bike shops and stuff like that. So from that job is where I ended up getting a job uh, at a different BMX company, Sunday and Odyssey. Oh, sorry. And then they had a, their distro is called Full Factory Distribution. And so that started in 2010 in Austin. So then we moved down there. I would say we had two Austin lives. So we, we lived there from 2010 to 2014. And then our first son was born. And then we moved back to Iowa to kind of be with family and just yeah. kind of hang out for a while. And then he, he kind of got old enough to where it was like, all right, like we're, you know, ready to maybe to not like, maybe kind of opposite of what you were saying with your story of like it it was maybe a little bit too small you know yeah. and so then yeah we went back to uh down to austin again and now we find ourselves in bentonville which is about the same size as my hometown <laughs> so it's kind of funny but yeah I, I was talking about that somebody uh i was like yeah it's mountain biking but it's actually a lot of small town like you see mm -hmm. a, well it's kind of weird like uh outside the the mountain bike realm of it mm -hmm. uh it'd be a lot of different like anybody i work with i don't see them outside the work outside work but like anybody I ride with you see them a lot oh for sure so it, it's crazy how all that works yep 
So uh, I kind of brought you on. We were, I, you know, you were talking about something uh, about uh, some trails, some big jumps, and you want it in the area. And there's a lot of people that agree with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, before we kind of get into that, you're more of a BMXer, I would say, by heart. Yep. Yeah, I I definitely if I had to like put any sort of label on what sort of bike rider it would yeah I mean I started riding BMX in like '94 and I still have a BMX bike and I can still I, I still have like maybe five or six tricks you know enough to yeah. keep the BMX oh, really? card you know but um, but I I primarily yeah since we've lived here been a lot more on the mountain bike and then I like to ride my gravel bike on the trails just as it's like a a different flavor you know and yeah so, I want to. Talk about that later. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, but, but so, yeah, definitely identify as a BMXer, but um, kind of all of my bike riding kind of, I look a little bit through the eyes of a BMXer, you know, when we ride on yeah. mountain bikes or if we are riding the, the gravel bike, it's all about choosing a line or the mountain bike. It, it's fun to ramp off stuff because you can yeah. land in a pile of rocks on a mountain bike and ride away and it doesn't feel like anything, you know, and so it's, yeah, it's. It's uh definitely shapes how I, I kind of ride all the bikes for if, sure. If that window shade's bothering, just hit that center button right above you. Yeah, push that in, push up. There you go. Um, so, uh, I always say to this day, if someone wants to get into mountain biking, well, they have a kid and wants to get into mountain biking, I feel like BMX is better to start versus cross country. I started because I think cross country, you want to stay planted to the ground. You don't learn how to jump. For sure. And BMX, you kind of, I feel like it transitions so much better. Well, it's, um, you know, so like BMX bikes, you're you're a lot more compressed in like what mountain bike coaches call like the ready position, you know, yeah. like that's naturally just how you ride on a BMX bike when you're pumping transitions or jumps or like pretty much everything, even bunny hops, it all kind of comes back to that ready position. Yeah. And so I think... You know, you muscle memory is definitely a real thing, and you you train your muscles to be in that position. And then also on a BMX bike, you don't have suspension, so sometimes when you land hard, you learn how to absorb the impact with your body. And when you can do that on a bike with a bigger wheelbase that also has squishy tires and squishy suspension all over it, it, it kind of like I said, feel like the first time I I jumped uh, on a mountain bike into a pile of rocks, I just kind of laughed to myself because it was just. You're not supposed to land and stuff like yeah. that, you know, but you it you don't feel anything. Like you just you hear your tires and you might hear the rocks kind of scattering, but it it feels just as smooth as landing on a transition on a BMX bike, you know. So yeah, it's it's definitely I think I like to refer to it as like kind of like a ninja, you know, a BMX bike is a ninja and it's just so quick and agile and so when when you go to the bigger wheels, it's a little bit more of kind of a natural progression and I think that's also why people who start riding on big wheels and then try to ride a bmx bike like going down is a lot harder than kind of going up on wheel sizes and so yeah it's uh i'm screwed then <laughs> <laughs> i think there's you know djs are awesome and i think you get a lot of the same benefits um on like a normal 26 inch hardtail dj yeah. as you would on a bmx bike but um i also think too though that it's like i spent hours and hours and years and years however you want to calculate it on a bmx bike and if anyone were to spend that much time whether it's on their mountain bike or on a dj or trying to learn bmx bikes like you're you'll get to a point where you kind of start picking it up eventually and you know if you take the safe progression steps at it you know and don't just try to go and jump the big line at the rail yard and yeah. you know just send it and i think that i think a lot of people can still get into bmx i think there's there's always hope there's always hope yeah i'll probably have to reach out to you eventually and i still need help jumping We'll get into that. So were you more of a Hoffman, Mira, or a Mira fan, or both, I guess? Uh, so, like, yeah, when we were little kids, our local shop was a Haro shop. And so uh, this is actually really kind of crazy. So I grew up in Burlington, Iowa, which is about an hour uh, south of Davenport, Iowa. And that's where standard BMX bikes are from. And they're they're a pretty big company. They're still, they still make awesome stuff, making uh, all their stuff in-house in the USA. And... Um, but back in the day, um, like the mid nineties, they were like, it was like S and M, this company and standard were the two biggest companies in BMX. And yeah. so standard had a skate park, um, like the same owner also had a skate park in Davenport called rampage. And that's where, so do you say Dave Mira, like that's where Dave Mira learned backflips. And like, there were just all of the pros, uh, 
who I would later grow up to like kind of uh, you know immortalize as like the gods yeah. of my BMX. Like they were young dudes, you know, living the dirtbag life, sleeping at the skate park that didn't have a shower, you know, and stuff like that. And that was all happening an hour north of where we were, and we were just like little kids and hanging out in our local bike shop that had like GTs and dinos and Haros and. So we knew who like Ryan Nyquist was and we knew who Dave Mira was and you know some of the X Games dudes and that was kind of the extent of of our BMX world and yeah then when it one of my buddies came back from a shopping mall experience and he was like hey we we found the skate park and the skate shop and there's pros and uh, it just completely flipped everything upside down and then yeah. yeah we were indoctrinated into the like the standard army is kind of what they they joked about where it's just you know the your young impressionable kids and it's like these are like the cool dudes and like oh man we're doing this now this is this is awesome <laughs> that's it so were you more did you like street or vert or uh one over the other we we kind of had some sketchy dirt jumps um is what we first started out with um like our fly out jump we uh we named it big bertha <laughs> so pretty, I, i'd never forget that uh, our trails were called king kong trails because there was some drainage ditch with a metal grate on it that uh, the urban legend was King Kong, you know, that, that's, <laughs> but it, they would always had been there since we were little kids. And then kind of the, the older BMX dudes in my town ended up throwing us a contest. And so they bought all this wood and threw a contest in our downtown at, um, kind of what same like Bentonville's Friday fest. It would have yeah. been like that sort of thing, but for my hometown. And so it was just me and my local homies. We all ended up taking those wood ramps to like a tennis court and, it was like a temporary skate park set up and it lasted until the next year and then we had the same contest again and we added more wood ramps and so we probably had like three three years of like wooden ramps and then um there were like metal ramps made that are still actually in my hometown today and so that definitely kind of skate parks for sure was where i grew up at i i will ride street and stuff but yeah, nice like four foot quarter pipe is my comfort zone for sure. So I guess it makes sense of why you're you've you're kind of itching for some dirt jumps around here. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely, um, you know, when we lived in upstate New York, there was a a set of trails up there that were pretty. There, I don't want to call them like basic or anything. I don't want to like yeah. discredit the dudes, but I mean, it was it was more of just like a straight set of jumps. Uh, I think there was like six in a row, and then there was another option that you could hit some rollers and a couple of hips and but it was a fun dirt jump spot and that's kind of what i don't know i guess got me dipped my toe into the dirt jump scene you know and like actual jumps where you had to water everything and sweep everything and work yeah. on it and tarp it and so from there when we moved to austin austin has like a huge dirt jumping scene and so really? they have a spot that's downtown called ninth street that um i mean it's like literally in downtown austin like it's it's a it's crazy to me that it's still there with as big as Austin's downtown is booming and everything. But it's, uh, I grew up with posters on my wall of dudes riding 9th Street when I was a little kid. You know, it's like been a thing for forever. And I feel like it, I've seen a poster and it said like, it just said 9th Street and it'd be like a guy. I don't know who, but I feel like I've seen that. There, it's, I mean, it's definitely, uh, it's the spot that kind of everybody goes to because there's a lot of also like, I guess what you would call secret trails. Yeah. Um, that really aren't so secret anymore in Austin, but for, you know, a few years, they all kind of were their own spots. And so everybody from all those trails would ride at ninth street and, um, then the other, other spots got bigger and bigger. But I mean, Austin, man, when, when I was down there, the like 2010 to 2014 era, um, I mean, there were easily like five sets of jumps within, uh, like kind of the city of Austin running all the time like it was like summertime it gets a little bit more rough you know winter time is the best down there but so it was kind of all the different flavors of some of the jumps um are massive huge huge jumps and some are more of like techie jumps and but yeah so that that ended up just being like what we would do and we'd go to the trails and hang out and we had thanksgiving dinner at the trails before you know <laughs> like i mean it was just like a, a big community that you know you're you're Typically, there's always going to be somebody at the trails when you go, and it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it was just kind of what we ended up starting to do. And so, yeah, definitely, you know, coming from Austin to, to moving here, it was, it was, uh, I and mean, we definitely came here a lot more for family. You know, we have yeah. an eight year old and a baby, and we, this is the spot to grow up in, like, for yeah. sure. I'm no questions with that, you know, and 
I knew that I'd be leaving a couple of things, you know, in, in Texas, but, um, there's, there, there are some fun jumps here and there's, there's enough stuff here that you can kind of scratch the itch, you know, like Huntley is super, super awesome. Yeah. Um, the remake that's happening on Mad Hatter right now, I think is, uh, going to be really, really fun. And, uh, but it's still, I feel like they're more of like what I would maybe, and this is me personally, not trying to always put labels on everything, but call those like mountain bike jumps, you know, yeah, where it's yeah. not more of like the BMX jumps that you would see where it's kind of a straight up lip and a straight up landing. And once you drop in, you're not pedaling. Like if you have to take a pedal, like, the it's like the gentleman's rule i guess you know but most people will stop and they'll go back to the top because that's kind of you're done you know like to it's not as satisfying for most people to to pedal through the jumps and stuff like that and so um you know like the bike fest jumps are, are super super awesome and yeah i was psyched to see big jumps and psyched to see all of the crazy stuff that all those dudes were doing on it uh but it was like every single time everybody landed and they'd start pedaling again you know and so those those are still like I said, not I don't I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, talking bad on them or anything yeah, no. with with any sort of criticism. But you know, it was I guess the fact of the matter is when people landed, they were pedaling to jump yeah, the next yeah. one, and um, you basically were, want come down, go, come down, go, just endless flow. Yeah, yeah that's that's kind of uh, that's that's why kind of why people are hooked on it. You know, is yeah. kind of that it's just like a roller coaster on your bike, and it can get super fast, and then all of a sudden it slows down, and then all of a sudden you build your speed back up and it's yeah that's that's kind of what is fun about like the bmx trails like when we say trails and bmx that's what we mean are just those endless lines of doubles and stuff like that have you been to the st louis ones uh yeah the the south county trails um so i i went to st louis a lot when i still live in iowa and uh a lot of my homies still dig there so i've seen the the evolution of you know the different name changes of figure eight is, is now one of the other spots that are, are kind of known down there. And, um, kind of the OG dudes, uh, are some of the OG dudes from the skate parks. So a dude named Tom Ranliolo is a dude that's down there quite a bit. And he used to own the, the indoor skate park in St. Louis. And, um, Tom McPherson is another BMX dude that also rides mountain bikes over here. As some people might know him, but yeah, those dudes are, they're still there and still killing it. And it's been a minute. I've, it's probably been, maybe six years since i've i've ridden those jumps up there but they look pretty good oh yeah they well they have they have something for everybody you know yeah. it's it's definitely it's not just big jumps you know and so that's maybe worth saying i guess that you know if, when i'm when i talk about like it would be sweet to have like a dirt jump park like yeah it for me like i think i guess everybody kind of goes into their own mind of what what they how they would be riding it or how they would experience it and like yes, I would love to have big jumps because that that is awesome, and yeah. and there's nothing better than hitting big jumps. But it's also now that like I'm a dad and my son comes and rides with me, like it's also nothing is better than like having a super solid session with your kid. And yeah, so yeah. having those like progressive lines that can build up to big gaps and jumps and stuff like that, with still having like smaller roller lines and kind of like that Frisco Adventure Park is one that I reference quite a bit. They yeah. have uh, like a little kid line, medium little buddy line, and it just kind of works its way all the way up. And then they have multiple jumps that just kind of snake in and out of each other. And yeah, it's it's definitely pretty awesome. What's like uh, the creme de la creme of like uh, jumps? Like a jump line of people like I wanted. I got to go here one time in my life. I mean, if we're talking like uh, public dirt jump spot, uh, Frisco is like that's the one that I want to get back to the most, uh, especially like all of our homies here who are in Colorado right now for a mountain bike nationals, yeah. like that's all they've been posting on their Instagram is like yeah. the pit stops of here and like the not race stuff. And there's been a few from Frisco and the jumps are looking super, super good. Super good. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know Jared Calhoun? Yep. yep. Yeah. Did you see what happened? No. What happened? He, uh, he's a national champ. Oh no shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. We'll, 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 we'll do that. I was actually, uh, before I got stitches, yeah, we'll, we'll finish that one for Jared. I was going to race that Fayetteville Enduro, and I was like, sweet, Jared's going to be out of town. Maybe yeah. I have a chance. <laughs> Dude is so fast. Oh, oh insane. It's in, he's insane, for sure. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so props, Jared. Oh, yeah. That's what's up, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think well, it was funny. Gary replied to me. He's like, I like jumps. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean so uh, I got to give a little props to Gary. Like, he's not, like, 
know or anything. I, I feel like he's pretty open about some stuff. Definitely. I, I think that, uh, I mean, like, if you know, his his Instagram picture, he's on a BMX bike. It's it's a, yeah. it's from back in the day, but, like, you can't really, like, take a BMXer out of someone, you know? So yeah. I, like, I know that he knows, he knows about jumps, you know? And I know that there, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of other dudes like him in the scene too that I think are are open minded and yeah I, I guess I don't want to say like I know this is happening or that is happening but it's like you still just you keep hearing rumors and murmurs yeah. of you know this might be happening here this might be happening here and so it, we'll see I keep like I just I say I joke I pray to the the trail gods every day <laughs> for a dirt jump park and and maybe one day it'll happen you know oh yeah there's always the rumor too of uh we're gonna have a, a lift access yeah the the chairlift at Kohler is that's one of the most comical Facebook threads yeah. every time anything pops up it's <laughs> I don't think now it's shifted from Kohler to somewhere in Bella Vista I've heard yeah I mean I've heard that there's there's uh they're trying to make a chairlift in Bella Vista and I think everybody keeps seeing the construction for the stairs at Kohler yeah yeah everybody. <laughs> Everybody keeps thinking it's a lift. And, yeah. Well, it's it's, I I'm I'm all about it. I mean, it's, I'm I'm maximum bullshitting on the way up when you're on a lift. <laughs> maximum hauling ass on the way down. It's like it's pretty awesome. So yeah. I, I'd be psyched if it happened. You know. Uh. So you also what's funny is you take your either road or gravel bike on mm -hmm. some of the gnarly trails, and uh, you actually had an accident. But before you get to the accident one, I saw you were yeah you took it on um inner planet yeah i took my hardtail on that and i hated it you took an actual like road bike on it well it's it has like i guess they're 47 c tires on it right now i usually ride a little bit bigger tires but i mean it's 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 the same trail but like with two different bikes it's like two different trails almost yeah, you know yeah. and so it's uh it, it really just makes you have to be really light on your feet and light on the tires and like have proper line choice and so it's it's more of like like you can't think about anything at all that's going on in your life like period because all you can think about is like don't hit this rock don't hit this <laughs> rock don't you know so it's uh that's part of why i like the the more kind of going down the hill trails yeah. on that bike and stuff like here's johnny at kohler is uh i i think i've ridden that trail more on my gravel bike than i have on my mountain bike because i think on the mountain bike it's like it's like just crappy enough to where you're like man i i would rather just take this jump this bike over and jumps like fire line or something yeah. you know it's like yeah, yeah it's like i don't know it's it's just not as fun on my my actual mountain bike for for me you know and um i definitely i don't know if i would ever clean the trail completely with that bike there's a couple of sections that are just pretty difficult but there are other times where i've, I've hit it where i've like hit stuff that normally trips me up and i'll hit it first go but and i don't know what i did different you know yeah. i think i'm just like I said, in that survival mode, and you just bounce off the rock the right way that that time, and it's also uh, temperature of that rock, uh, <laughs> like, as in like if it's too cold, or where, where to, what I'm saying is like where that rock grips your tire. If it's sure. too hot or something, I don't know. I, I've kind of noticed that sometimes a little bit with the, about rocks. If it's like the right temperature, it just grips perfect. So yeah, I don't know. I hate that trail. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I, I go there when I have like less than an hour to ride and I'll just like drive to Kohler, park there, ride straight to that trail, try to hammer it out, hammer it back and kind of, you know, maximum intensity the whole time and then go back home. And yeah, it's, it's still pretty good though. I still, I don't know why I like it, but I like it. <laughs> Are you uh, uh, a Brad Sims fan? Yeah, dude, that dude rules for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah, he's, uh, I'm not going to say he's co converted, but now he's riding mountain bike a lot more. Oh, yeah. I've seen, I actually, before we moved from Austin, we ran into him at that Spider Mountain spot, and that okay. was kind of right when he got that bike and was feeling it out. And another one of our uh, BMX homies named Morgan, uh, French Morgan is his name in the Austin BMX. He's from France. Yeah, oh, you, okay. I didn't know if you got that. Or <laughs> 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 but so, yeah, he, he's like a mountain bike mechanic and uh, kind of dialed Brad's bike in. And so we just randomly were at Spider Mountain at the same time. And, he's he's that dude is really 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 good on a, a bmx bike and yeah i think uh yeah some of the stuff he's figured out on a mountain bike already is it's pretty insane for sure uh i listened to a podcast i don't know the name so i'm sorry about that but uh how it was hard for him to even get sponsors for forever for sure and he was just just kept grinding for sure i think that's uh 
uh, our BMX, which like used to be Ride BMX magazine dudes, uh, like Ryan Fudger, he has a podcast, um, man, and now I don't know what it's called, Feeble Talk, maybe? That might have been, okay. the, uh, been the Ride BMX one, but it's uh, our BMX, and that would be the Brad Sims episode where, he, yeah, he talks about a lot yeah. of that stuff, and it was... That, that was just BMX, you know, I think um, he kind of talks about it and touches on it that you know, some of those dudes, like, they might be, like, on the pro team, but they're making, like, 400 bucks a month. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's, like, it's just wild. depends on what BMX company, you know, like, certain BMX brands, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely making way more than, than 400 bucks a month, um, but it's, it's also, like, there's always that veil of, like, kind of trying to stay on the cool guy side of things i feel like in bmx where it's it's very image based which i get you know but so sometimes also dudes don't want to ride for the brands that pay well because they're not cool brands and so yeah. it's like a, a, a kind of no it's a a balancing act like the the dudes who give i guess less of a care if they ride for a cool brand and they just want to get paid are then they're usually the ones that are on the not cool brands which then further makes it not cool and I don't know, it's a weird, like I said, it's a weird image-based kind of thing, you know, but I think Brad was lucky that he just kept chugging and then kind of getting, like, the 510 Adidas stuff and yeah. getting, like, like not BMX brands to sponsor you. That's that's huge, you know? Like, that's where it's, like, you're you're a, you're a higher-level professional, yeah. I think, than, like, the average BMX dude who's, like, might be hustling on his Instagram or whatever to do what his sponsors want, but... When you have like like I said, brands like Five Ten coming at you, that's you're you're an official for sure, dude. Is uh Canyon have a BMX or how do you get with Canyon? I don't. I have no idea. He might have just. I don't know if if I I I'm I'm sure that those dudes have like agents also at that level, yeah. and so I'm I I have no idea how he ended up with the Canyon stuff, but I don't know if Adidas is friends with Canyon and yeah maybe they were like friends on MySpace back in the day. <laughs> or so. I don't know. You know, it, it, you you can only guess on that sort of stuff. You know, but yeah. So yeah. I, uh, I know a little bit about BMX, and just because my buddy back home, uh, shout out to a guy named Stephen Savage. I don't know if you ever heard him. He's, Stephen Savage. He's actually a South African, and he, but he lives in Cincinnati. He was traveling around. Uh, he was. Act, I'm pretty sure. Uh, don't hold me to this, uh, but he was 19. He was the first person to do like a 360 down a stair, like a set of stairs, and. Uh, he was like he he's so humble he was like yeah yeah that's old. like he won't talk, he don't talk about it at all now that's cool but uh yeah but what he was telling me is back in the day um you would wear i think i think i think i have this right you would wear cut off jeans and a wife beater if you wore anything else like more clothes you were hated on <laughs> something <laughs> like funny. that something like that there, i mean i feel like there's definitely a lot of the 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 dress code back so back in the day um you know, when I was, I guess, you know, late teens, early 20s, you know, when it was like you had to be cool also on your yeah. bike and you worried about the image stuff, like, um, a lot of the music scene was, uh, like, hardcore music and, like, screamo, weird type music. That was kind of what would influence, like, the BMX dudes. And so it was, like, a thing in hardcore to, like, wear girl pants. And so it was, like, a big thing in, in BMX when I was growing up to where it was, like, you would go to, like, the girl section to shop for pants. And yeah, my, uh, my homie, the mailman, who he's been riding a lot of these uh, these AES races. He's winning the 30 and over class. Yeah. He wore girl pants. <laughs> he, did. He, he, he loved them. He loved them. He said they were more comfortable. Really? <laughs> who's uh, who's a dude? Uh, I should know this because he's from Kentucky. Um, he always wore stuff like that. He one of his uh, he started his own bike brand, and uh, he had this jump where it was like over this thing. Like way back there, no helmet, cracked his head. Uh, you, you would know if, I, if you thought. Matt Bischoff was, uh, he's from that area, and he um, started a BMX company. That doesn't sound right. I mean, this dude, ah, dang it. We're probably in different eras, too. Like, I'm, I'm extra old, dude. I'm like 40, so. That's all right. Yeah, all right, cool then. We're, well, the reason, we're, they, had a, they had a documentary about him on uh, Red Bull. Um, yeah, but he saw this jump. He didn't even like, he's like, all right, it was like over this railing. And it was in a parking lot. It was the parking lot was rant like slanted down, and he landed it. But he wore girl pants. That's what I was trying to get at. I'm wondering. I'm trying to trying to think. Uh, he went. He uh, he started a bike company, but it never. It's not around anymore because he just. He was he wasn't a stable dude because he hit his head pretty. He was just out of, like 
out all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, he was pretty well known, but anyway, yeah. So uh, yeah, so how did you hurt your hand on the on the bike? On was it on Interplanet? No, this is actually the day after that ride. So I did have to take the walk of shame on that ride. Uh, I I ended up after Interplanet. Janet went back up and rode down um, My Hero Zero, and it was oh, it was yeah. awesome. It was like just as chunky, and it was kind of I was. I think I'd burnt my tire the run before also. Uh, you could actually, on the clip that I posted on Janet, like that big roller, I smashed into something that I totally did not see, and it like thudded everything in my bike and my body. And, and <laughs> So I, I think I lost some pressure on that one, but um, then going down my Hero Zero, I just punctured the uh, front tire. So I got off, put a plug in it, and was just trying to be quick about it and trying to move my tire and get the sealant and all that stuff in. And I ended up like spinning my tire when I still had the CO2 inflator on my valve. And oh, yeah. after I inflated it, so it just kind of like T1000 like snapped right off. And so I was like, cool, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I took the walk of shame on that one. And then where'd you park? Uh, at the top on J Street. So I just walked all the Ooh. way down to the schoolhouse, walked the road, and then walked the gravel all the way back. And oh, man. Yeah, you got to pay the toll to rock and roll, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, what what can you do? Uh, but then the next day, I went to go ride uh, Stagger Wing with my homie Pablo, and we parked kind of down by Tanyard Creek to ride towards Stagger Wing, and uh, had all my stuff, uh, had my gloves in my pocket, and we almost made it to Stagger Wing. We were just bullshit pace, and my front tire kind of slid down, went like as soon as it washed out once I put my my foot down and my foot kind of slipped a little bit and then at that point there was zero momentum and I just pushed my hand down but just on all those sh- super sharp rocks and yeah so it just instantly I kind of looked down at my hand and I was just like well we're <laughs> we're, we're going we're going it's uh it's stitches time and so his girlfriend came and picked me up and then took me to my car and yeah it was what can you do Maggie, Maggie, my cat has been has joined the the podcast. That's awesome. Uh, so, how many stitches do you have to get? Seven total. Wow. Yeah. So, was... uh, one time I was on the back of a side by side. We were just cruising, nothing fast, nothing anything, and uh, and uh, my buddy was just in the field. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, he just he finds a sinkhole and I, it was like abrupt. My face hits the top, like boom, right here, like right below my nose, it, and it was like an upside down L. And I had to get nine stitches, and uh, the doctor's like, you know, as bad as that is, you didn't go all the way through, you didn't hit your nose, you didn't break any teeth. I'm like, well, that's good, but yeah, it was it was wild. I was stoked because there was nobody in line at urgent care, and I was like, sweet, like this is. I'm, I, I went right in and. Then I feel like the dude like really rushed me and he didn't clean it out super good and so like it was super dirty still like for days I was still just like pulling pieces of trail out of it and it was not not ideal situation. That's more of what I was worried about was to get infected on this round and yeah. But yeah, chug some anti- antibiotics and just neosporined it and all the all of the stuff kept it as clean as possible and when you get them out. Uh, I, I think I'm going to take a couple out tonight and there's probably like three that are probably another three or four days probably. And I think they're probably all ready to come out now, but I just trying to keep it safe and cause I'm, I'm going to do something stupid and like reach for something or grab for something yeah, and then yeah. that's when it's going to split open and it's just going to be longer to take to heal and <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of partying right now. I know. She's like, Hey, I like it. Who's his guest? Uh, so you... You do mountain biking. You're like a coach in a sense, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, I work with Bike School Benville on their academy team. Um, so that's kind of like their youth development kind of race race team. Uh, they actually were at nationals too. Uh, one of the homegirls, she she got third place in downhill. I was pretty yeah. stoked to see that. Saw that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. She actually is one of the rowdy ones. That's like my very first practice. I uh, I hadn't met any of the kids yet. Hadn't ridden it with any of the kids yet, and so. Um, we went to session Jesse's last stand because to me that's a good qualifier trail to like figure out like all right like these are the good skills you have you know this really? is what you can do just for me to watch someone and pick apart I guess you know and mm-hmm. so we, when we went there the first lap we went down all together to just kind of warm up and 
she was the first one to drop in behind me and she was like right on my back tire and the whole time she was just yelling go faster go faster go faster and I'm, like and she's like the tiniest one of all of them and so in my like lining them up before we dropped in i figured that she was going to probably be bringing up the rear and then I was like man shame on me like judging a book by its cover and it was it was yeah. awesome kind of get put in my place and be like man like this is she's 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 a wild one and she's been doing really good at uh thunderdome throwdown and yeah, she's been she's been shredding. So it's working with bike school has has definitely been fun. Um, but I also do um, like private coaching and stuff like that also. So I have you know just like clients that will. Some people have like race goals. Some people have like a specific like you know drop the hammer is like something that people want to try to do stuff like that. Um, so it, yeah, just kind of I don't know the the private stuff is fun because it's kind of whatever you want to do. We kind of take the steps to get there and try to keep it kind of safe and progressive and leave people with uh kind of like more than just like we did this today on this trail like leaving you with like the knowledge to know like all right i did this today because i did this you know and so yeah. now i can apply that to all of these other features and and kind of take that to the next step in my riding progression and stuff like yeah. that and so yeah, that's kind of my my main gigs right now is uh, bike school and doing private coaching. Uh, have you had any do adults? And then a second question: If you have, what is something that they've wanted to learn? Uh, right now, I actually um, I do have a regular uh, adult client that um, so she she's been working with uh, another coach on like basically everything not on the bike related stuff you know like fitness and and um i guess i'll take that back it is still it's like strength training i guess um so she has like a coach that teaches her to do that stuff and then um like i'm kind of more of like the skills side of things and so when we kind of had our first conversation i'm like all right like you know what what are some things that you can do on a trail right now that you would like to do a little bit better what are things that you can't do that you're like aspiring to do and so we just kind of wrote out this long list and we've just been kind of checking stuff off. Uh, our last session, like she really wants to get better at drops. And so we sessioned the drop zone at the skills park and just kind of worked on some skills there. She did the middle drop, which she had never done before. So that was kind of a achievement unlocked um, that had kind of from the initial talk, you know, I, I would like to be able to do this. And so we got to that one and then we actually went to Shrain Train and um, she was able to clear kind of off of that first step and kind of catch the the down slope where the dirt and the wood matches she was able to jump down to that wood which is i don't know maybe 15 ish foot gap yeah. out and so that was a uh, kind of another victory that we were wanting to be able to do and so it's you know some stuff is specific like that um other stuff is just like everybody wants to jump and yeah. and i get it because jumping is sweet and, and <laughs> I, I like teaching people jumping too but yeah. that's one that it's like I'll, I drop like subliminal hints, like, you know, we're going to work on this skill on this trail. And then once we've kind of conquered that, we go to this part of this trail and we do a couple of things that we worked on with a little bit of this sprinkled in and kind of after you build a few of those off, uh, kind of on top of each other, then we would go and ride like fire line. And then those are typically the sessions where people are like, Oh my God, I've never been able to clear all of these tabletops on fire line. And it's, it's like, yeah, you know, kind of working at it the correct way instead of the like go faster pull back harder sort of approach is yeah. kind of where you know it like i was saying before if you put in the time uh and actually you know work towards your goal it i i think it's a lot easier to reach the goal you know instead of just trying to reach that goal in two steps for sure yeah yeah i was always a i don't know why i had this mentality no idea but uh if i get further back on the bike it, it'll when i hit a jump all oh, it'll just it'll just i'm pulling back which in reality learning actually not too long ago that you're putting no weight on the front it's diving oh for sure yeah and uh once i realize that and then it's more like i don't someone told me you almost want to be like what they say like almost like like something like a, a like a a gopher or something you're up out of the ground or however they want to yeah, say yeah yeah i could see that for sure uh and then you want to pull that to you and once i figured that out game changer i'm not saying i'm any by any means great but it, it changed everything and now mm -hmm. fire line yeah i'm clearing everything and I, I don't know i get i i guess the theory was 
Uh, if I'm pulling and I feel like maybe I was going to dive, I don't know. I, could, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I, I like to, in my lessons, I refer to that as like the rational human thought process that yeah. you have. You know, you are, you are thinking like a rational human being of like, maybe maybe I shouldn't be trying this on this jump, you know, or maybe maybe I shouldn't be trying to pull back really hard or, you know, it, and it, it totally makes sense because it's, it's, it's a new kind of thing. And, but yeah, so that's, we, we always joke if we're kind of trying to think in our irrational brain and, and kind of push through some of those, not necessarily mental blocks, but like just maybe bad habits or whatever you want to call them of trying to work past that. And then kind of, I like to call those, those like light bulb moments, you know, where you're like, Oh yeah. And once I figured this out, the game changer well then once the game has changed then you have like a whole new foundation of skills that you can build off of to then have that next game changer and you know four game changers later and you're you're shredding some stuff you know you ever had it to where like you know you uh, i'll say you're pretty advanced in what you know but like you're going back to the basics and sometimes you're like all right I've, like you know that you've gone past this you have to break it all the way back down and like hard to teach somebody that maybe sometimes kind of i or also i think too some people um so actually my my uh one of my clients she she did a lot of horseback riding and she has like a really natural uh really awesome natural ready position and we kind of discovered that it, a lot of it came from how she rode her horse but how i guess they do crazy stuff on horses yeah, you yeah. know they <laughs> like jump over fences and stuff and they they move their feet to tell the horse to do certain stuff and so that's been like one of the things that we had to like stop and like kind of basically but go back to step one was like like this is what you're doing and this is maybe not the the correct way to to kind of approach the skill and or the safe way or however the effective way and when we would do small corrections with our feet it's like oh yeah now now this makes sense and we like i said after we do a lot of like slow motion video where we'll look at everything and zoom in and be like your feet are still doing this they're still doing yeah. this and i think that helps people also kind of with that visual aid to like that next run like purposely put the feet in the other direction where they need to go or whatever and so yeah that's it's it's definitely uh i think sometimes also i've worked with people who've worked with um different coaches before me and um like i i'm from the school of, of thought of like there's like no right or wrong way to do stuff there are different ways that, that you can do things and different ways for different people you know and so i've had some people well this coach told me to do this and this coach yeah. told me to do this and i'm like that's cool like still remember what that coach told you to do but like maybe also try this and and now you will know what works best for you in what scenario and um so that's been you know i guess the other one where you'll have to like break it all down and you know start from step one and but it's, I don't know, it's, it's still part of it, you know, and I just, it's, everybody's a little different, and I feel like that's maybe one of my strengths is kind of being able to, to go on the fly and adapt with, with whatever we need to do. And Yeah. I would love to be able to, like, uh, like tail whip a little bit. That's, like, my goal. And I know it's in the hips. I know oh, for sure it's in the hips, yep. And it's like I get everyone, I'm like, going to try, try any, and then I just, I always chicken out. Well, I think a lot of it too is like being relaxed because you have to be, you know, like being in that like calm sense before you go up. Uh, Cause you, you know, you're not going to be able to like move your hips around if as soon as you get up in the air, you're like tense and like, yeah. Oh no, you know? And um, I always, uh, I always reference that Bruce Lee quote of uh, be like water, my friend. Yeah. Um, I use it for when we ride catch berms, like, you know, he says water, is smooth and shapeless and formless and all that where he talks about how it's really fluid and flowy but water can also crash and so we'll the catch berms are where water crashes you know and then the jumps are kind of where water's flowing and and just kind of once you get into that flow state and you're just relaxed that's that's when you know wiggling the bike a little bit one way or the other or you know taking a hand off or you know just getting a little tricky in general like it it's a lot more fluid feeling when you're doing that instead of like all right i'm in the air force the, force this one hander and then come back down on the bike yeah. and so it's it's just i don't know it comes with it it's like that natural like your comfort zones increase as you jump and as your comfort zone increase then your comfort of being able to get a little wiggly will increase and for sure uh yeah and then uh 
you, sometimes I see people like you. You jump like I'll hit the same jump, and I'll see you guys like sky. I'm like, what? Are, what am I doing wrong? I'm not even getting. I'm just. I'm clearing it, but mm-hmm. then you guys are just like booming. Is that is that called? Uh, sorry to cut you off. Is that like using the pedals to push through? For sure. I mean it. So like on Huntley, or even at the Skills Park, you're you're kind of pushing, and trying to like pull back and kind of go against gravity because when you hit the jump the forces of the jump and and kind of the trajectory of all whatever the science terms you're going straight up into the air and so the more you can pull back kind of the more weightless and the more hang time that you can get before you kind of come back down but that's like you know going high also pairs with like a certain level of speed because you have to have like enough momentum and velocity to kind of get you up there and uh, but yeah it's Usually if you see someone like, like the skills jumps are a great example that are two or three feet higher than everybody else. They're basically doing like a bunny hop at that very last moment on the lip. And that's, okay. there's bunny hopping with a, a little uh, sprinkle of like pushing the back tire, like through that lip and kind of, it's more of a pull back than it is like a pull up, like the three pack where that rocks uh, soldier statue guy is yeah. like, that's maybe a little bit of pulling up. We're just kind of pulling up cause they're smaller jumps and yeah. But like that, the the jump that kind of uh, is runs parallel with the drops. Um, that one you can go really high on because that nice big long transition and yeah, it's I guess you know you you hear like the driving your heels into the transition and all that. That's definitely part of it. And so you're not <clears throat> so you're not pushing down with the shock. You're actually like pushing with. You're going like that. Yeah, I mean there's there's definitely a compression of everything and it's yeah. you're you're compressing all of your energy down at the exact right time to hit the ramp at the exact time to be airborne at the exact time and it's it's all a you know split seconds of timing and then one of those split seconds is off and it kind of throws everything else out the window you know but it it's a you know one follows the other and it all the way to where you're kind of stalled out in the air and then however you know how to land like that's like like difficult to you know describe of like yes this is how i know to turn my wheel down and to go down but it's just at that point of weightlessness when you're starting to come back down is when you you just kind of drop the wheel back down and do you push down sometimes or a lot depends on depends on the jump depends on the lip depends on you know did you mess up like are you having to push down or um if it's a really steep landing you're definitely kind of coming up and getting ready to push down like on bmx trails you're compressing again because you're airborne to compress again and um so yeah that one kind of just depends on on the ramp i guess i feel like all all this is like how i think right before i hit a jump and i'm like there's so much how do they do it but then i realize it's almost like second nature to you but me i'm like all right pr- press compress and all this i'm just like i barely made it because i had to think about five different things there's a lot i mean when i try to help people with jumping too like uh, I kind of joke of like, I have like the tour to tabletop through slaughter pen where it's like, like my kid is a great example because, uh, he's, she's trying to jump stuff right now. And he's, he's, he has this, the comfort on the speed and he has the ability to jump, but he doesn't quite have everything figured out together. And so there's a lot of times where it's just like, he'll just come smashing down on the front wheel and like, just kind of getting kind of sketchy and wild. And it's like, all right. So through necessity just to like not have anxiety for me i started to take him to like all right this is the tabletop we're going to learn how to pull off on like and this is you'll learn how to launch on this one this is the one that you're going to learn how to like it's going to put you in the air the same every time so you're going to figure out all right this is how i feel in the air and then we're going to go to this other one and this is the one that you're going to learn how to land on because it's really easy to launch off of so you don't really have to try and the faster you go the more of a landing you have and so just really through sessioning with him i kind of have now you know four or five different little spots just in slaughter pen that is like all right like like you said it's a lot of stuff all at once happening and so it's we're gonna go until we master this one and then once you master this one you can kind of understand this one a little bit more and and just like i said kind of build off of each other but yeah that's that's kind of how i like to teach is Maybe not like one session of one jump session, like yeah, I could probably help you with your jumping and help you be more confident. But like for people that like want to learn how to jump, that's where it's like, all right, like we're gonna go on a couple of different bike rides, you know, and maybe through like four or five bike rides, 
you're going to now understand the physics of all of this and how your bike is and how your body is and you're going to learn how to do it and those I feel like are the more successful missions where you can kind of let that person kind of go off onto their own after that and they're they're pretty capable and comfortable on a lot of the stuff that's around here is there a trail you like i would say like the graduation trail that you like feel in a sense to like bring it all together i think for a lot of people who who uh they're very they're just learning how to jump uh not like learning to like kind of get better at it i feel like fireline is always the first one where it's like everybody loves it it's it's fun to ride before you know how to jump so a lot of people are familiar with that one so that's that's definitely one that i like taking people to um and then as as kind of people are graduating and it's like the maybe the proving grounds you know where you're like you know all the stuff you need to prove to yourself now that you can do it um at huntley uh I'm really bad with the names of the trails at Huntley because uh, all I ever ride is, is really Shock and Awe and I yeah. go out there. But it's across the street from Shock and Awe. Um, the one that's by itself? Yeah. The one that like takes forever to climb back to yes. the top? Yes. I don't know what that's called either. But, but. Okay, all right. But that exact, yeah. That, and it is pretty fun. Uh, yeah. But at the very top, it has kind of a nice gradual drop in elevation. So it's like a constant for your speed. And then there's two tabletops in a row. And you can peel off after the second tabletop and kind of there's like a line that loops back up so you can session just those two jumps and yeah yeah so that's one that is uh that's a good one to go to and like spend like 45 minutes of just repeated jumping and kind of learning by repetition at that point so that there's you know it kind of depends on the person too but generally yeah like you're you feel confident after jumping some stuff on fire line then that's where we would take it to like fully cement in everything and eventually it would be sweet to do trains with everybody down shock and all like that, yeah. that i work with you know it would be awesome for it, sure it's funny like you know the psychological part of it is tabletops people are like oh i got it let's cut that middle part out now we mm-hmm. got doubles and they're like i ain't got that and i i think that that is like why tabletops are awesome and why there are so many tabletops here because it's more progressive uh, or not progressive it's it's more like inclusive to like more more riders like even if you can't jump it you can kind of roll up on the top and roll across and come down and uh you know my son went down fire line when he was seven before he was like able to do any jumps or anything but he could roll over everything you know and so i think that that is like an important part of it you know but um typically though when you see those jumps that are like actually doubles they're not shaped the same as like what kind of a mountain bike tabletop jump would be shaped like because it's a very steep lip because you kind of just go straight up and then it's a pretty steep landing because you come back down and so it's to have a jump that's a tabletop like that typically like you wouldn't ride through a set of trails like that on that type of jump and like land on the top and then roll back in like it would it would just the the physics of it like you wouldn't be able to like maintain the flow and the speed of the line it would kind of just be really bucky and then you would kind of land kind of wild on the top and then most of those jumps they're steep enough landing that you wouldn't be able to just like ride down in because your sprocket would kind of bash through the landing and so you would have to like actually jump down into the landing and so i think that's you know having the you could have like a, a mountain bike style tabletop that doesn't have the middle in it but i think it does serve more of a purpose for having you know everybody be able to roll across a jump like that and it's uh it makes it you know easily progressible also too you know for the little buddies all the way up to you know the people who are in their 30s learning how to jump and everybody kind of you know, needs some of that for sure hang tight yeah so i was trying to think of like what's the trail in slaughter pen they just redid it. it's like a jump line that was it was more aggressive they kind of tamed it down just recently apple something oh apple turnover yeah, yeah. yeah. so before they turned turned it down that trail was kind of fun it was aggressive but like that step down and then that tabletop ball after that that was good i uh i i think that that is uh so for me that's you know on my mountain bike you always you know chase the the bmx dragon i guess if you will (laughs) so if i can ride a line without pedaling and just kind of flow through the whole line that is like a, a big thing that i search out for so like shock and awe as soon as you hit that first little drop you can pretty much ride everything no pedals and it slows down in some spots speeds back up and yeah so that's that's fun for me i like that sort of stuff and so 
uh, that was kind of my first test on that Apple turnover was like, all right, can you hit everything without pedaling and clear everything and jump everything and like first go down, everything just like worked perfect. And I was like, awesome. I love this. This is super cool. Uh, and then I took my son who we were probably fresh off of a leopard's loop session, which is uh, like, that's one of the regular ones we session quite a bit. And I, yeah. it, I think it built his confidence and he's like, all right, I'm, let's do this one. And I, I for sure, uh, I should have had him follow me and, and, uh, but we had just had an awesome session and he was doing good. And so I was like, yeah, you know, just control your speed and we'll go down this one spot where you go kind of fast. And but yeah, he totally came down that one and got too much speed and just kind of got all bucked on that first table and kind of the, <laughs> the same old story that, that I think has, has been, uh, getting told right now on that line where it's, it's, it's very accessible to a lot of people. It's like, in the heart of slaughter pen where like everybody goes and everybody sees it and so i i think that that one is like like when you make everything so accessible it's it's uh and and you also see all these other riders who are hitting it and making it look super easy you're yeah. like oh yeah i got this you know and that's definitely a, a line where you speed up you know yeah. going down that step down and i think that some people uh they might even be doing the re-ride pre-ride free ride and they're they're on their their first go down and they're trying to roll everything and it still goes faster than they think it should and i mean it's it's i don't know i've i've definitely uh seen the ambulance <laughs> kind of parked over there a couple of times and you like i said you just just through a conversation you've heard there's been some bumps and bruises on that trail and i uh i don't know it's that's like it's like a hard one to uh to say like you know should we have it there should we not have it there like how should it be better how should it be changed and i think you know we you know you and i can speculate our opinions on that yeah. all day but ultimately you know there are people who that's their job is to figure out like all right like how can we minimize uh you know injuries at here and how can we make this trail more safe or however you want to describe it you know and so it's that's kind of you know one of the things we're living where we do and having all those amazing trails that we have is there's there's uh some of them that are you know maybe going to get tamed down because people are getting hurt on them or you know it's i think going to be you know kind of part of it but yeah it's uh i still really like that trail and i i i don't know it's 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 tough to like say oh i wish they would never change anything because it's that's what i like and you know recognizing that you're probably in like the the smaller i guess like percentage of people who are actually riding it and jumping it and yeah you know most people are just kind of looking for like a a fire line medieval type flow line and and that could have easily just as just as easily been built right there you know so it i don't know i just kind of hit hit stuff when the hit when the getting's good and if it changes it changes and if it doesn't I you know f i forgot about medieval because that that's just i feel like that trail has been down for so long dude it's getting it's getting dialed in I right know. now I, so, I have you been over there recently i drove on the highway and i saw i was like whoa they're uh the it's like the manny packs that dudes um uh, are over there right now and they have it's like super highway super wide and there are are jumps now where there was nothing at all before oh, also really? yeah like so on medieval there was kind of towards the end before you kind of come back over the crest of the hill and hit that very last tabletop yeah yeah uh, there's kind of just like nothing over there you know it's just real bumpy and rocky and you're just trying to maintain your speed to hit that last jump and now there's like a hip to the right that's over there and there's a set before the hip to the right and um there's i mean there's there's jumps like and shapes the whole way up it's i'm i'm getting super stoked for that one i know that one you come out so you go right turn under the bridge left turn and there's that jump if you're not square sometimes and that one one time it got my back in and i was like oh <laughs> like i was like oh, i gotta square up for that one yeah and i, I think uh i heard those dudes are gonna do catapult also and and get all that stuff dialed in so i think that whole line being able to jump uh to drop in with the castle and have all of the new speed and everything I think that's that's going to be the new everyone wants to go ride, you know, yeah. trail and slaughter pen, I think, for sure. You think Catapult, they'll make it more blue? So, I mean, like, Catapult really, um, in its its current stage right now, 
it really just has like that first bridge jump yeah and then some berms and then the second big long bridge some berms and then that third uh kind of drop bridge yeah and then i think there was like maybe one or two tables after that um they might uh like, i mean it's a great learning trail or intro I, trail i like that one personally more than uh medieval just because the the two bridges the two last bridges are yeah. just super fun and you know try to Every time I try to clear to the dirt on the second bridge, and then every time I try to see if I can manual across the third bridge, and it's, I don't know, that, that's a fun one. But I, if, they, if they do similar things that they did on Medieval to Catapult, they have room to, to add yeah. a couple of, of uh, more shapes at the end. And, but it, I think Medieval is, is going to be the new, new favorite. I'm going to be, be <laughs> curious to, to hear the, the feedback on that one. Do you it's, think they'll uh, keep lone wolf kind of loose like that man i hope so i mean they they did just they they redid lone wolf um for the bike fest race um so i think they started on lone wolf because it was that same crew because they're the dudes that made that like 30 foot like long and low at the bottom of of lone wolf oh man that's fun i i only rode it uh like uh, on race day that was that was the only time that i've done it and then they've closed the castle up and i just haven't been out over there yet but I know it's still chilling there waiting, dude, and it's, I'm, I'm coming <laughs> you can, for it. You could, I guess, shouldn't tell you this, tell you about this, come up from the bottom and just do that. I'm sure that someone could if they wanted to, and yeah. I've, I, uh, maybe if I needed to do it that bad, maybe I would go in for a quick hit, but I'm trying to, uh, especially right now in, like, 100-plus degree days, give the trail builders, like, all of the grace that yeah. you can possibly give. and It's a ghost town out there. Dude. <laughs> It, it's it's pretty wild it's pretty wild yeah like you might see people in the morning i say past 10 o'clock till i don't know when i mean you you have your pick of the trails <laughs> we drove uh to blowing springs to just kind of hang out earlier we kind of had some some dinner out there and when we drove kind of from over here is where we live when we we drove past the all of the slaughter pen parking lots on walton like by the dog park and there's like maybe three cars and yeah. then the blowing springs parking lot had three cars with bike racks on it and no other cars in the parking lot and then i saw while we were at the the kind of watering hole over there there were three different people on bikes and that was that was the only people that i saw on like a sunday afternoon you know so it's it definitely goes down yeah i was now. in my truck and i was just work, doing some work things on the computer and uh i was like oh, i'll just park over there backside of the slaughter pen i was like there's nobody here I was yeah. like, I'd like to maybe see some like bikers go by or something. You're not know, seeing anything. I'm I'm uh I'm I'm not really bummed that I have stitches in my hand right now. I, <laughs> yeah, the like, timing's good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how do uh, what's the best way to people to reach out to you? Uh, people can hit me up on my Instagram, it's Bobby Rides Bikes. That's uh, a, as I did. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's a uh, that kind of usually can always get the ball rolling, and then then from there, you know, if people are looking for coaching stuff um depending on what you're looking for uh i usually like to have you know some sort of a phone call conversation type thing to you know for the like the the lesson packages that i offer that have kind of like a lesson plan those are usually like i can create that off of a conversation of this is what i like to do this is what i'm not good at this is what i think i'm good at that sort of stuff um but yeah for you know any any sort of like uh you know guided ride or lesson yeah you can always reach out to instagram uh so if there was dirt jumps here do you was there a spot that you already had like your eye on do you do you see a spot oh man i i mean i would (laughs) this is all just my my own like i have no knowledge and no no secrets or anything like that but i love kohler and so that's always my first like yeah the the more awesome you can make kohler the better um that's you know the closest trail to our house too is going over to park at Thunderdome at, at Kohler Grove parking lot. And so, I mean that in my, my selfish, uh, you know, there's elevation over there, but I, that one is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just leaving it up to the trail gods and, and let them work in the ways that they work and see what happens. And yeah. I'm uh, sure wherever, wherever we get something, any jumps, I'm, I'm all about it. And then we all, all, all us mountain bikers or bikers, we know Walmart's moving down the street. We all want the old headquarters to be indoor. I mean, that's what we're begging for. That's what we want. Uh, Will it happen? I don't know, but why not? The uh, the indoor indoor uh, bike park thing is that's another wild rumor that I always hear. Yeah. And uh, when we lived in upstate New York, uh, we were only four hours from Ray's, and we went okay, there yeah. quite a bit. And then um, some of my homies ended up like they were the ones that worked there. So it was like, 
you basically we would just drive after work on Friday, show up, the park would be closed like right when we would get there, and then we'd get a ride whatever line we wanted to, whatever direction, however late we wanted to, and um, it is awesome. Like having an indoor spot like that, I think would like it's it's already a strong scene here like yeah. there's no no way about it there's there's many different genres types of cycling whatever you want to call it from the xc dudes to the gravel people to just dirt jump people there even are just bmxer people here like there's a lot of people and that having an indoor spot would be like the unifier of all of those scenes you know because yeah. they would have something that everyone would want to ride and i think just the the notoriety of it of like it would be cool so people would probably end up like getting their their dirt jump bike or their bike park bike you know like people would have their raise bike like this is yeah this is my bike for raise and it's like all right cool you know and it's also when you have like a seven thousand dollar mountain bike like a fifteen hundred dollar dirt jumper it's like yeah oh that's nothing you know <laughs> dude I, i'm that person i was looking at uh dirt jumpers never had one but i was like oh it's fifteen hundred that's it and i'm like they're like, yeah, I mean, that's that's not that's about average. It's a pretty nice dirt yeah, jumper, yeah. you know, for sure. <laughs> but like, yeah, you, you're right. I paid like mm-hmm. five thousand for my mountain bike, so it's like, but I I do remember the time I paid fifteen hundred for a mountain bike. I was like, I'll never pay another dime again for a mountain bike. And here I am, four times higher. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I know exactly what you mean for sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like a raise would be here. Would you rather see something like Rays, or would you rather see some? I was talking to somebody like a Woodward. Um, I actually, I used to work at Woodward East when I was younger and kind of live, live that life out there. And Woodward is awesome. And like, you know, Woodward from, of the early two thousands is different now than it's different owners. It's owned by the, oh man, I can't even think of the, it's some financial holdings group that owns it now. It's like a fortune 400 company, you know, it's, it's insane. Um, and then seeing all of the Park City, Utah, uh, there's there's like a Woodward in the Mine yeah. Riviera. They're they're kind of all over the place, and I think I think that having like a Woodward type place would be cool for being here. Uh, but like, if it had like the Woodward label on it, I think yeah. that would be like limiting of the people who would be able to use the facility. Maybe just because it's, I think the Woodward, uh, most of those parks right now, it's it's not very uh like inexpensive you know it's it's yeah. you you got to put down a pretty decent chunk of money whether you're staying there as a camper or doing like their weekend overnighters or any of that sort of stuff and so you know where rays um you know when i grew up that skate park rampage that i talked about it was seven dollars and fifty cents to ride a rampage like and for the longest time you know and so then when you go to a place like rays where it's like 35 bucks to ride and at first it was like man like that's that's crazy to think like you know thirty five dollars we we used to only pay seven fifty to ride at a skate yeah. park but then you kind of think about like the overhead at that building is probably like four times as big as the skate park that I I mean the the skate park rampage is like the size of like the pump track room at at Ray's you know it's it wasn't a big skate park compared to the square footage there and um, then also when you think of like all of the different types of things that are at the facility like there's the spot at uh, Ray's Cleveland that had just the the BMX box jump foam pit type stuff where you see yep. people, it's pretty much just BMXers working on tricks over there. Um, then you have like the pump track room where it's like everyone is in the pump track room. Yeah. Like people who are on like full suspension mountain bikes, little kids who are on striders are, are in that room, you know? And then you have like rooms that are dedicated to pure beginners, you know? And then you have more of expert sections and you have the skinny sections and so it's it's pretty expansive on you know what you get with your 35 bucks and um i think that that's for for like the the average person that i see that's like at the rail yard or at the skills park or um or maybe who show up to like thunderdome on a dirt jumper type stuff i think that there's a um enough of that crowd that would would be down to pay that 35 bucks or pay your monthly membership or whatever and uh I, I think that that would be a more sustainable type place for around here compared to a, like a Woodward type place. And I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I'm sure when you're a fortune 400 company, you have a team of people who are going to tell you if it's a good investment to build here or not. And I'm sure that there are teams of people here in Bentonville that, you know, have that same information and make those same calls. And I, from, for me, like I said, personally in my, like, you know, as just a dude, my opinion, <laughs> I, I do, I would, definitely much rather see like a raised type indoor type park than than like a woodward that 
you know, maybe a Woodward down the road would be cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think that there are a lot of kids here who I've seen posting their Woodward clips and stuff like that. So I think that there are young kids here who could benefit from that and, you know, like raise their skill levels significantly off of having a, a place like Woodward uh, versus a place like Ray's, you know, but the foam pit at Woodward was pretty nice. The foam pit at Ray's, it was just maybe a little bit crustier, and, you know, but it's <laughs> yeah. still a foam pit when you land in it. So right. it's, you know, I think that's, that's the difference, you know, is the, the, the more boutique style ramp experience is Woodward. I think yeah. nowadays compared to Ray's is like, you got to dodge this bucket that's catching the drips from the holes <laughs> in the ceiling and you're okay with that. You know? Yeah. I mean, they still do very well. And what's good about Ray's is, uh, they don't make it stale though. Like right now they're changing things up. Yep. Yep. The, my homie, Paul rad, he's, he's the dude in there right now, smashing in all these little two by fours and every little tiny piece cutting to make all those crazy berms. And so, yeah, it's, I think that is also, like you said, that's cool to yeah. you know, be closed for a part of it and, change it to refresh everything and yeah it's pretty pretty awesome so do you think x games is dying man that that clip so <laughs> so last year seeing x games dirt in this dude pat casey's backyard and x games uh, park in his backyard was like cool to see because it's still cool to see that the x games is still having bmx a part of it because it yeah. seems like it's for action sports there's not as much anymore and it's all motorsports now like motorcycles and rally cars and flat track is in the x games now stuff like that which is just insane to me to think of you know but um it's i think man this is like a whole nother <laughs> podcast series of uh like i don't know miss necessarily on like the other like skateboard action sports you know but i feel like bmx as a whole has is not maybe as big in the grand scheme of things as what it used to be you know in the late 90s and um and i guess you know in, into like the mid 2000s and stuff like that and like it used to be in huge stadiums like in austin they had it at, yeah. at circuit of the americas and then they had it at the um whatever it is city bank in in uh the twin cities where like the the um minnesota vikings play and um so they used to have like these big stadiums and have it be kind of what it always used to be you know um but then i think it was it was already dwindling at that point and i think it was like a struggle to 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 keep the same ratings and keep the same things happening and it you know if you look at like how the world is now everybody is like watching stuff on their phone anyways and yeah. so it's interesting now how they have like the mega park and some I, I assume it's a skateboard dude in california but it's definitely somebody's backyard in california where it's straight up a video game level out of like uh skate three where you're just bombing down and you jump like a 70 foot jump and then you hit like an 18 foot tall quarter pipe and then you hit like another you know huge like 70 foot jump and that i think is like you know the the x games always used to like uh you know for their viewings try to try to get like that lowest common denominator of like the the people who, who are tuning in to just see people eat shit you know and yeah and and I, I get that, you know, it's the same reason why a lot of people like to watch NASCAR is because they, they think they're going to crash and stuff like that, you know. Um, but it's, I think I just think that it's like kind of adapting with the times and, you know, through the whole curveball of COVID and everybody being able to rethink everything of how they do things. I think that the direction that they went is a smart and safe direction because obviously you're not going to be able to go back and try to sell out a stadium again because that's still even now kind of questionable if if you can yeah. do that and how how things could be affected and i mean it like i'm not like a huge road bike nerd but if you've been watching the tour de france and stuff there's been like dudes who have been pulling out because they've been catching COVID still and right so it's it's still out there and and affecting you know the you know races or contests and all that and um that anthony napolitan dude who is here at bike fest uh he rides for yt but he's also like a bmx dude yeah yep. that's who i've been seeing the bmx stuff through his feed and it's just looks like some california trails yeah. just at, on some private property and they might have spiced it up a little bit for the x games but other than that it's it's kind of what everyone back in the day used to cry about like uh the X Games weren't weren't real, you know. Uh, they they were uh, they were like too manufactured, and it it didn't. Like I said, there's a lot of image in BMX, you know. <laughs> so it, it didn't it didn't truly represent who we are as 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 BMXers, you know. And 
Um, then when X Games started to go to those mega ramps, you know, that even even further kind of separated core BMX riders to like the guys who ride in the contest because, you know, like I'm I'm like I said, four foot quarter pipe is my comfort zone, not like a hundred foot mega ramp, and so it's like how how do you kind of um, compare yourself to to the dudes who are riding that sort of stuff? And is it the same BMX that you really are doing? And but so you know when everybody would would kind of be like, oh yeah, trails like it's just three straight jumps. It's not real trails, and it's not it's not uh, it's just not real. That's all it it all boiled down to. It's just not real jumps. And now they're real jumps at real trails. And um, so I, I I don't know. I think that it. It's it's just kind of coming full circle, and it yeah. it's maybe not necessarily dying, but it's not. It's like the same. It's not the same as what it was. It's like maybe X Games 2.0 now, and which is, you know, like like I said, we we could maybe discuss our opinions of if we think that's better or worse, you know. But it's, I think it you know just changing with the times and doing what they can to still you know X Games be a company and succeed as a company and not kind of go belly up and. Yeah, it's uh, I remember like Dave Mira doing like a, a flare back in the day, and you're like, he did a flare, and then like, uh, who's a real tall dude, Kevin? Um, he's like a realtor now in OKC. Uh, I think his name's Kevin. Real tall guy, blonde hair. I don't know. And then he would come and he would like be right there with him, and I was just like, I don't know. I was just so in tuned, and now I feel like, yeah, you're right. They're changing though. I'm like. They put on ESPN Plus, which like now I gotta buy this. It's not on ES. It used to be mm-hmm. on ESPN. It would take up. It'd be on ESPN, ESPN two. It'd take up the whole block. Mm-hmm. Like it would take up all day. And you're like, all right, cool. I'm not gonna miss anything. It'd be BMX one side, skateboarding the next channel. Now it's like buy plus, or you can stream it on X Games uh, on Instagram. I'm just like, you're losing me here. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's also like we're old dudes and yeah. so you know like their yeah. their target demographic for kids trying to watch the x games are probably like know all of those channels and yep. um you know it like i said it's when i was young that's that's what we did and that's what we watched because that's what like you know spoke to us as like yeah. the young kids and so it, i just think they're t- telling the same story but just through different ways now to yeah. it's reaching the same audience, but you just have to adapt how you tell your story. And do remember Fuel TV? Oh yeah, dude, for sure. <sighs> I think it tried to come back. Actually, you can uh, you can like pay for it now. Really? There's an oh, app yeah. for it. But That's I know, awesome. like when I got it, like there's some free stuff still. Like if you get the app, whatever. And I'm like, God, Fuel TV, man, you're bringing me back. That definitely, yeah. That was a. Uh, I feel like that was kind of a step in the right direction for BMX. You know, kind of. A, opening up uh new doors to uh maybe expose bmx to people who wouldn't normally see it and yeah i was kind of always an advocate of like um like yes bmx is core and it's ours and we want to keep it how we want it and like i have all of those same thoughts and feelings and opinions um you know i think any truly like passionate bmxer does you know you want to you want to take care of bmx because it's been taking care of you forever but also like when it was kind of when I was working at um, Full Factory, like Sunday and Odyssey in Austin, we just in a normal kind of bullshit in the office one day, and we're talking about how it, the, someone saw a random dude at Chick Fil A wearing a Sunday hat, and he didn't look like a rider, you know, and which is like, you know, yes, bad to judge a book by its cover, but also like because everything in BMX is so image based, it's like yeah. it's pretty easy to pick someone out of the crowd that it's like, oh you you yeah, I yeah, you you definitely ride BMX, you know? Yeah. But so it it kind of started the discussion of like, you know, someone being a poser and stuff like that, and that was always bad to be a poser. And it's like really if more people who didn't ride BMX bikes would buy Sunday hats or by you know the the videos and stuff like that that's just more money coming in to our sport and that's more money coming in is more people who are going to get taken care of there's more budgets to go on trips and it was uh like i don't know once once the conversation started going down that road it, it really kind of just opened up my mind to to really like yeah i mean it it's trying to get as many people into it as possible even if they aren't necessarily a rider you know and so having stuff like the X Games is how you can make that happen. You know, you're 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 not gonna 
reach those same people because they're not going to like search you out on your Instagram or they're not going to go to the skate park and, you know, watch you ride a bike. They're just going to look at it on their phones. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's good to see that stuff like the X games is still out there yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad it's still around. I hope it doesn't ever go completely away. Are you all, I was thinking of another guy, Reynolds, uh, Clint Reynolds, Garrett Reynolds, is a Red Bull dude. Uh, Those are the Reynolds dudes that in BMX that are. He won gold one year. In, at, in street, yeah, yeah, that's Garrett Reynolds. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. that dude is like a phenom. He's been riding. Yeah. Since he was like a 14 year old kid who was who was entering pro contests, and that was in the mid 2000s, you know. So he's he's been a dude for a long time, and he's he's been doing it for a long time. Do you like him, or are you more of a Chris Kyle fan? I mean, I don't know. I, so really for me, BMX has like progressed so much from like, like, I don't know, like I, I'm definitely not as sharp as what I used to be on my BMX bike, you know, and, um, there are certain like watching dudes who go like really fast and really deep cement bowls is, is yeah. that, you know, that's maybe if I had to choose, I would, I would watch that stuff. But you know, like the GT video, for example, is going to have like all different types of riding and so like i appreciate all different kind of forms of bmx riding whether you're a strictly street dude or you're strictly a mega ramp dude or you're there's a dude in there tate ruskelly who has he just does weird things on his bike like i don't even know how to describe him like straight up like he'll go ride at a wall and he'll pull a manual and his front wheel won't be bolted into the forks and it'll bounce off the wall and then he'll slam his fork back down and catch his wheel like that's the type of stuff that he does and it's Damn. it's 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 different than what i've ever done and but it's cool to watch and so it's like you know for me it's all all bmx is i'm into you know and maybe i'm like a, the old crusty dude now who has like lived enough in the bmx world to know like all right like it's cool to see people still out doing it it's cool to see people doing this and but it's yeah if i if i need to get like super stoked i would still be going back to like the the era of like your video is probably still on a vhs tape and almost a dvd those are like yeah yeah that would still get me pumped to ride like you know videos from back in the day yeah back uh mine back in the day if you ever heard of a video called crusty demons of dirt <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> i mean that th those videos changed my life I those mean, are crazy ones for sure yeah so if anybody knows you just know i mean they're just they don't even make videos like that anymore like guys who were like full motocross have signed deals and then like on the side when they're not racing they're out racing sand dunes and doing whatever yep <laughs> they're living the life for sure yeah. they're not just racing for a paycheck they're 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 bike riding motorcycle dudes for sure i i actually i think i have i still have a couple of those there's like an old bike shop that closed and i like they they had like all these dvds still new in the the cellophane and it was like five dollars for all of these <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah <laughs> i'll have awesome. to go back through and see i some of them some of them are like really old uh crusty mountain bike videos too where it's just yeah. like you just sit there and all like i can't believe that these dudes are doing this on these yeah. bikes like this is insane to me yeah like clunkers oh, seen no i haven't i have not seen that but oh man i would love to do some of that stuff yeah oh man <laughs> yeah. i know there's there is a part of me that's like you know you gotta appreciate what these guys did on those type of bikes and then when you got try you're like what i ain't doing this because your your mind's already like i got this new stuff now dude it we uh when i lived in austin the second time i worked at a shop called bicycle sports shop that's a pretty big retailer they're closed up now but um just the wildest mountain bikes would get brought in to get serviced and every time we would just like stop and look at it and be like man this is like like the green belt is the the trail system that's down there and it's it's really it, it's like here's johnny rocky stuff like all over the place oh like my it's, God. it's there's some crazy i mean there's some smooth sections too you know but it's uh it's wild trails and that's where i kind of you know learn how to ride the mountain bike stuff at and listening to you know the dudes be like oh yeah i used to ride this bike on this trail and we used to do this on this trail and you're just like oh my god dude. like you are a legend <laughs> yeah 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 well hey man uh thanks for taking the time thanks for coming on it was uh good talking to you uh i think i'm gonna go ride with you and then you can 
you can uh, pick a, how bad a, a, of position I have when I jump. Well, we'll 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 find we'll find the the sweet spot for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, once again, it's Bobby rides bikes on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're also a coach, and uh, yeah, just a just a shredder. Just a I like like riding bikes. All, yeah. all all the bikes. Yeah. What's uh What's your next now? Like, if you're not doing BMX, what's like a challenge you want to like face next? Man, I. Uh I had my last kind of goals on my BMX uh, stuff was to like jump a couple of these lines in Austin that I still hadn't done, and I was my goal was to do it before I was 40, and I I I, I missed Ooh. it. That didn't didn't make it happen, so <laughs> I just have to live with that now. And um, I think now like I I kind of you know wanted to see in racing, you know, like I've been doing the enduro stuff here. This is the yeah. first time that I've raced in like the pro class in any races, and I didn't really expect to like, you know, set any records or anything like that, but you know, I kind of wanted to like push myself and just kind of be a part of the racing scene just because it was something that I'd never really been a part of before and so that's been kind of my like, you know, I have a trainer in my garage. I don't I don't use it too much right now, you know, but I've, you know, tried to, you know, my goals were to be able to, you know, race competitively here yeah. at least in the local pro class and I feel like I'm almost there, you know, I have some fitness stuff that you know working through and like crazy food allergy that i developed after i moved here and so once i got that all figured out kind of you know got back on the proper diet regimen proper riding regimen and so i mean that's that's really all i have right now is you know just it's it's more of now like like i said riding with my kids and it's more of like helping him do what he wants to do and i feel like I don't know. I know this is like super cliche, but I, f- I feel like very privileged <laughs> to all of the the places I've been able to ride and all the places I've been able to go, and I I feel like pretty happy and satisfied with you know if I had to hang up the BMX bike for good right now, I could say that it was a good run. Hopefully that doesn't ever happen, and I'll still be you yeah. know old crazy dude in my 60s or whatever out there <laughs> doing it. But uh, maybe keeping the tires a little bit closer to the ground. But but yeah, that's for goals. That's pretty much where it's at. Oh, cool man uh yeah once again um uh, those are good goals yeah i know it's like sometimes there's a part of me when i'm 40 that i'm i still like i'm not 40 you know but then also i gotta like some hey you are 40 oh yeah for sure and I... <laughs> there's that goes through my head like they say but like people i've talked to like yeah at 40 it's kind of like you need to figure it out not not like figure it out but like you need to realize you're a little older now and you need to kind of adjust for sure for sure i don't uh, bounce as as well as i used to yeah yeah <laughs> well uh, once again thanks for coming on i appreciate the time and yeah. uh everybody i appreciate you all for listening i'll see you